Hey, I'm Casey McDonough. I live in St. Pete. I teach high school at Shorecrest Prep, mostly ceramics, but also some graphic design. I have a studio at home where I work in ceramics and also installation art. And I love teaching. I've taught from the age of tiny little children up through college age students up to community classes with grown adults. I hope you enjoy what you see. So I wanted to use my time today to demonstrate this press molding technique we use in my classroom sometimes. What I like best about it is you can accomplish it using mostly things you find at home plus a few of your items you should already have as tools. A quick introduction to what I have in front of me, a little bit of slip for joining the clay. I have a couple different release agents that I've used, vegetable oil, mineral oil, cornstarch. The mineral oil is particularly useful for larger objects the cornstarch for um, semi-permeable objects. I'm gonna use the vegetable oil today because it's the least greasy. I have an X-Acto knife and I have a scoring tool, okay? Let's talk about the objects I selected and I'll just do a couple in front of you now. Uh, this would be great for kind of a expanding cube shape. Measuring cups, always good. Ceramic bowls you have, as long as the lip doesn't curl over, your clay is going to come out of it, okay? It could be any shape, but as long as the lip's not curled over, curled over the clay's going to come out of it. A flexible one cup measuring cup. I'm going to use this one today. Also a flexible small plastic bowl with a flat bottom. And some athletic equipment. A tennis ball, a ping pong ball. Uh, I have the other half of this racquetball somewhere, but I can't find it. So, let's get started. Let's do the tennis ball first. It's really, really simple. Some vegetable oil on the inside. Both halves. Leave those right there for now. I do have a block of clay over here. Just gonna pinch off the amount that I need, make it roughly round, goes in the bottom, and then I just slip my thumb in until I can start to pinch it into the form itself. And I'm using both thumbs here to press out. So I have this bit that sticks up, maybe you like that, I want them to be more spherical. Exacto knife right along the top of the tennis ball. Rotate the clay, not the knife, you'll be much more accurate. Same. And then score as you would clay normally. I scored both halves. I don't need much slip here. What's nice about the tennis ball is you can tell exactly how it lines up. So I gently, gently press them at first and then really firmly press them together once you feel like it's lined up. What's nice about these rubber balls is to get it open, you can gently pinch one half and it'll come right off, all right? And then here, same thing, I'm just pinching one half. It's okay if it splits a little bit because it's about to fall into my hand, all right? Just make sure it's pressed together. And I would set that aside, come back if I wanted to smooth it out. The process would be the same for two ping pong balls. Let's take a look at this guy here and then I'll show you a few things you might be able to do with them. So, same, vegetable oil. The oil leaves a little bit of a, obviously, sheen on the surface until you fire it off. You might not like the way it feels. I've done this with all kinds of different lubricants, WD-40, etc. Vegetable oil is nice, it doesn't really smell like anything. A bit bigger ball of clay. And then this one I like to kind of pinch into a pot shape. 
a rough pot shape anyway. Okay. It goes in the bottom. I'm going to press down and out and rotate. These guys can be a little trickier to get out. If you were gonna do this in a hard form, your best bet would be to turn it over and wait a little while and it'll come out on its own. Students have always told me that getting them out of the form without ruining them is the hardest part. Uh, it just takes time and practice like everything else. So I just made this two inch sphere this like four and a half inch half sphere. If I'd use the ping pong balls, I'd have these nice little one inch balls. All right. And you could see how these types of objects could, could become parts of a larger sculpture. Once they become leather hard, you could join them, make a bubble or a cloud shape, maybe make a column of them. You can do this with other types of forms. This was that sort of flat bottomed bowl, okay? This one here. Um, any shape that isn't undercut. In other words, if the lip curves back in, you won't get the object out. That's the key part to know. So that needs to be half a sphere or slanted edges. That's about what I have for you. I'm gonna wrap it up. I really appreciate your time and I hope you find this technique useful at some point in the future.